Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to a little bit of a uh, comic deal here. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do a couple of things. We are going to look at my recent pull, what I pulled from my uh, comic shop, which is very small. Then we're going to uh, kind of work off of last Monday night's No Faces chat with Bubs, Medrog, and DS. It was supposed to be about uh, DC Comics, but we got on to a subject about price variants and uh, comics that are from other countries and uh, pricing as like pounds and kroners and all that other kind of stuff. And I thought, you know what, I'm I knew I had some foreign language books and I thought I'm going to go through my boxes and see what I can find. And what was really cool about that is I got to go through some of my boxes that I haven't been through in a long time. And I really enjoyed going through it. I spent an entire eight hour day uh, going through the boxes, picking out what I wanted to show you and we'll talk about it. But first, let's get going with this. And it, of course, is True Believers where I'll always start. And I'll show you what I do sometimes with my True Believers books at the end. This is, of course, uh, True Believers number one, Absorbing Man. Got uh, Thor and Absorbing Man on the uh, front. And I've always loved these uh, True Believers. I think they're so neat to see these covers redone. And then we have True Believers, the criminally insane, the claw. Of course, we've got Black Panther on the front there, looking just awesome. And then DC, not to be left behind, gets on the bandwagon with their dollar, Detective Comics, starring Batman. Uh, for the first time anywhere, all new Black Canary. So that's obviously Black Canary in her new outfit. And that's all I got for uh, those kind of books. Uh, so uh, here's my pull. <laughs> Uh, Faye Dalton is your cover artist, and it is Betty and Veronica, uh, Red Sonia and Vampirella meet Betty and Veronica, number eight. In this, they've gone back now to uh, Vampirella's planet, um, Vampir Vampiria, and uh, they're going to take off from there. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, Stentari Stir Fry and my favorite guy, Conan the Barbarian, number 12. I thought this would have been done by now because they're <laughs> like eight and nine kind of almost made it feel like it was the end, but it really wasn't. <laughs> so we're still moving on. I haven't read this, but uh, the story has been okay. Gets a little thin in some parts and a little repetitive, but it's been all right. And then I saw this in the dollar bin and I absolutely had to pick it up. Uh, Savage Sword of Conan. This is Joe Jusco cover. Uh, love the crazy face, the crazy eyes. And uh, one of the very few covers where he is sans babe. No women in this one. Well, I mean, inside there is, but on the cover there isn't. But I just love the crazy face and the crazy eyes. He looks like a punk rocker or something. But uh, just going to town and going absolutely bananas. So when I was going through my books, I found a couple covers that I absolutely love. And this one, this is from 1991. This is a Dave Stevens cover, and it is Rocketeer. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie, but uh, I love the movie. Uh, I have ordered the uh, large statue of Rocketeer. I don't know when I'll be seeing it. some point this year I'll be seeing it. But uh, just this cover just is uh, an amazing cover. I love to see it whenever I can see it. And I probably will uh, display it with my... Uh, with my statue when I get it. This one from 1976, cover Ernie Chan, and of course it is Freedom Fighters, uh, number one. And it's a little rough, but uh, it's just, I just love the red, white, and blue. You know, you got uh, Uncle Sam, uh, the whole cool bit. It just, it's just one of the covers that I super, super enjoy. And then this one, I don't know who the cover artist is, it's Boswell. Uh, this, this one just cracks me up. Uh, now, this guy was introduced to me by Silver Age Dave. I saw Silver Age showing some of his books. And this is Reed Fleming, The World's Toughest Milkman, number one. I, I just get such a crack out of that, The World's Toughest Milkman. I mean, look at him. He's, he's a tough guy. He's swinging off a crane. There's his milk truck. I mean, come on. This guy, you don't want to return your milk and say, hey, you know, the cream's bad or whatever. But uh, I just, I don't know why this one gets me, but it just absolutely slays me. Reed Fleming, The World's Toughest Milkman. So thank you, Silver Age Dave, for pointing me in that direction because I just love this dang thing. Okay, so let's get on to the subject that we were talking about on um, No Faces Chat about books, foreign books, and some books that uh, look the same but have slight little differences. Uh, this, these are from 1997, and the uh, cover is Jesus Redondo, and of course it is Kitty Pride, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, number one. Now, both of these books, when you look at them, are identically the same. Uh, one is direct edition, and the other one, I think, is uh, 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 newsstand. Now, here's the funny part with this. Now, if you look at this direct edition, and I'll bring it in, the direct edition here says that it is 250 US, 350 Canadian. Okay? Now, you look at this one, it's exactly the same book. 
It says 250 US 340 Canadian. Now, why the difference of 10 cents? Is it for the shipping? Uh, obviously, it can't be because one is a reproduction. They were done on the exact same date. Nothing else is different about these two books other than the fact that there's a 10 cents difference in the Canadian price. I'm going to guess that it is one is shipped to you and one you get off the newsstand. Now, uh, Roger or Bubs or DS, uh, if, if you have any idea why this, is, this book did this, let me know uh, because I'm curious. And I'm really curious because it brings out what you guys were talking about. Why is there a 10 cent difference between these two exact books? Uh, I really don't know. Everything looks the same. Nothing changes anywhere on the book other than just that price. So let's remove those and move on. So one thing we talked about was some books that had three different pricings on it. Something like this uh, book right here. And this is from 1993. Uh, Glenn Fairley is your cover artist. Now this is Hellblazer, of course. That is Constantine. And I, I, I collect books that have the German swastika. But if you look over here, it says uh, 195 US, 250 Canadian, and 1.2 pound, 1.20 pounds. Uh, so it has three um, uh, prices on it. So this was released in US, Canada, and Britain. So, uh, you know, does that change if you got this graded? Would it change because it's been released in the UK? Who knows? Then you have this one, which is from 1985. Trina Roberts is your cover. And this is Meet Misty. Uh, number one in a six issue limited series. Don't judge me. <laughs> Star Comics. But again, the same thing. 65 cents in the States. Uh, 30p in the UK. Canada, 75 cents. Three different prices for the same book. Um, does that affect its grading? Does it affect anything? Who knows? And I'm going to get a little repetitive on here, and I'm, I'm just showing this one because I love the cover. And it's the same deal. This is done by uh, Lou Manna and Rich Buckler, but this is a tribute to uh, Wally Wood and Reed Crandall. This is Hall of Fame Thunder Agents, same thing, buck twenty-five in Canada, one dollar in the States, and 50p in the UK. Uh, quite interesting on that, that uh, a lot of these books came out with the three pricing uh, like they did. And then the last one, and this one I was really surprised to find I had, uh, this is Jim Mooney. And this is the same thing. This is Thundercats number one, 75 cents in the States, UK 40p, Canada 95. And the only reason I'm showing this is I didn't even know I had this. Uh, this is an incredibly excellent copy of this book. And I saw on uh, my comic shop a graded one at 9.6 going for 300. Had no idea this book had that kind of power. But um, it's beautiful. Uh, I think if I sent this to Bob and got it pressed and sent it in, I'll bet you this is a 9.4 or a 9.6 all day long. But. That is pretty cool. So now let's go to the foreign books. Uh, this one is a Michael Turner cover. It is from 2000. This is Witchblade number one. It is done by Eidos Comics and this is a Finnish version from Finland. But it's got the Michael Turner cover. Now the Michael Turner cover states one looks exactly the same. There's not much difference. The only things that are different are this core and the Eidos thing are different. But it is top cow. Now here's the thing. If I sent this in to be graded and I sent in a, a, an English or an American, North American one, would they grade the same or would they grade different because this is Finnish? I'm, I'm you know, uh, I wonder about that. Would that, would that make a difference? Uh, DS and Bub seem to think it would. Roger, I can't remember if he thought it would or not, but uh, I think it would as well. Uh, then this is an interesting deal. This is from 1999. Uh, I don't know who the cover artist is. This is Archie. Uh, this is French Archie. And uh, you'll say, oh, okay, well, you know, this is French uh, from France. No. This is not from France. This is from Montreal or Quebec, Canada. This book was released in Quebec and Quebec only. Uh, this is French that is spoken by Canadian French. This is not uh, French French. Uh, if you, a lot of French Canadians that go over to France uh, and speak the French that they speak here in Canada can't be understood to a certain degree. So uh, again, a French book only available in Quebec, not the rest of Canada, because the rest of Canada wouldn't have picked this book up because you can't understand it. And uh, so that that begs the difference. Is this book got any kind of rarity to it? Because it was only available in one province. Now this is number 321. It was only available in one province in Canada at that time. And I think, what did I say, 91, 90, 99. So does that make that a rare book or does that just make that a, an also ran? And also this one, the same thing, this is from 1993, 
Henry Scarpelli is your cover artist. Now this is again another uh, Quebec French book and there's Archie and he's saying terra terra which means land land and down here it says uh, Archie Ducouvre la America which stands for Archie discovers America and uh, they're talking about some of the decisions that he's made there. Again is this a uh, hard to find book because it was only produced in Quebec at that time and somehow leaked out and it ended up in a comic shop? Or is this an also ran book that means absolutely nothing? Now, I've looked in Overstreet. These books are not graded. They're not listed, so they're not around. So that's the question for you guys. Do these books have any value uh, or any rarity? Because, I mean, the limit on these, and this is number 257, the limit on these would be very, very, very small. And they only have the Canadian pricing. Um, and they're only available in one small province. So does that make these books rare, or does it make them nothing? curious to see what your, your comments are. Um, one of the books that my grandma used to get for me, and I've got a couple of them here, is Rolf Kaka's Papito. Uh, we were German. I am German. My heritage is German. And my grandma was uh, able to read German. She was a, uh, you know, she, she knew German. So uh, Rolf Kaka was, uh, Kauka was around the house a lot. I didn't understand it. I just thought it was quite funny. And uh, it has different pricing. We have the Deutschmark one. Uh, I do believe there's some Kroner in here. There's the Lira and a bunch of... So basically, this is a European market. They're looking after Germany, uh, Italy. It uh, looks like France. Uh, I don't see any uh, English. but it, So they're looking after that part of it. And then, of course, there's another Pepito here. Um, and these were 32 uh, NR, whatever that means. But uh, usually they have the, uh, the uh, Deutschmark up here. And again, you can see the listing for the other countries here. Uh, and these were quite funny. I guess you would fall, call these um, uh, kind of uh, funny animal books. And I do believe he had some input into the Smurfs, as you can kind of see here. This is from 77, again, Ralph. Now, Rolf Kauka was, Kauka was not an artist. He was the guy who ran the publishing company. Um, these uh, books were, and, and he ran a publishing company. That's what it was. And this is Fix und Foxy. Uh, again, you can see up here, it has all the different, you know, it has 24 Jerg, uh, Band 44, Deutschmark 160, um, Lira, uh, Lira uh, 28, HTFL, whatever that is, 190. Uh, again, uh, all German. Um, do these books have any value? Hard to say. And then the last one, and the Ralph uh, Kauka is Fix and Foxy. Uh, again, uh, another fun book. These were fun, and uh, again, all the pricing up here. Do these books have any kind of value because they are German uh, or, or foreign? Uh, I don't think they show up in any Overstreet books, but it's kind of cool to look at those. Then we move on to my favorite guy, and uh, uh, Centauri will love this. This is uh, 1985. This is a Finnish version of Conan, uh, number seven, uh, 1985, 8.9 kroner. Uh, and this uh, Mika Ja Maganleti stands for, hold on, uh, Sword and Magic Leaf. Uh, that's what that stands for. Again, a very nice looking book. Um, Conan, a Finnish cover. I don't believe this was ever done stateside. Uh, what, what would happen if you got this graded? Where would it go? Would it have any, you know, that's, that's the thing. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. This is from 1998. This is a Mexican uh, book. This is Sergio Argonas. And this is Sergio Agarnas, uh, Masra Marvel, which stands for Marvel Massacre. This is a wraparound cover, and uh, of course it is very uh, cartoonized. And uh, we know him from Gru the Wanderer. He does Gru the Wanderer. And also in this book, uh, the interior has uh, art from George Perez, uh, Joe Sinat, uh, John Romita Jr., Mary Severin, Al Milgram, Terry Austin, and Joe Rubenstein. Um, very kind of interesting looking book and of course you can see all these guys characterized I mean look at the big nose on Spider-Man and we've got the thing over here in Captain America uh, a Mexican book and this was uh, 27 uh, pesos number one uh, uh, Marvel Comics but a Mexican version of Marvel Comics uh, I'm gonna remove those now here's are some cool books that uh, that I thought were very cool this is from uh, 1968 Herb Trimpey is the cover artist and this is a German release, and it is Der Unglaublich Hulk, which stands for the uh, Indestructible Hulk. And uh, this is one Deutschmark, and Mein ist der Rush stands for Vengeance is Mine. And I think that is the... Uh, 
uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, he was on uh, the Mandarin. I think that's the Mandarin. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, there's the the Hulk, H A L K. And again, with this one, we see this is Hit Comics. We see the different uh, markings for uh, the rest of Europe. No, uh, no pound for Fra uh, uh, Britain. Kind of cool. And in that vein, from 1969, this is a Goodwin cover. And this is, I hit number 203, Der Eisern, which basically is Iron Man, but in German that means the Iron. So he's called the Iron. Uh, Dark Knight der Phantoms, which stands for Knight of the Phantoms. And I'm assuming this gentleman is the Phantom. Of course, we have um, we have uh, Iron Man there and the damsel in distress and Bub. And I think uh, Roger will be very happy to see that she has a green dress on, not the red one. So that's pretty cool. But I really love these books. I mean, they are on pulp covers. These are not shiny covers. Um, so again, this was strictly hit comics, strictly a European release. And the last book I'm going to show you that I just absolutely love is 1953. This is uh, Lorna the Jungle Girl. This is a Mexican release. And uh, Entra Ferras, I think, means... Be what does that mean? That means Between Beasts. And the other thing is this part here, this murat, is Death in the Clouds. And there she is. There is Lorna the Jungle Girl. This is number 53. Uh, this is from 1953, a very old book, uh, swinging into the jaws of a crocodile. And in this one, what's kind of interesting is she is saving the dude in distress. Uh, she is not the damsel in distress. She is the dude in distress that she's saving from this crocodile. Now, she has a pocket knife here and he has a shotgun, but she feels that she's going to be able to do this. Again, this is very cool. A Mexican book. Uh, what's neat is they got an ED marking here and they got an ES marking up here. And it says Una Revista, which um, I'm not sure what that means. I'm sure Roger will be able to tell me what that means. Uh, very cool book. Uh, it's, it's in pretty great shape for how old it is. And uh, I just had a really great time going through these books after watching that version of uh, No Faces Comic Chat. And I've done this once before, and that's what I really like about No Faces Comic Chat, and that's why it's my favorite comic book show to watch, because they really touch on the issues that, you know, um, make you want to, hmm, you know, hmm, hmm, hmm. So I don't know what might happen here. I might send a couple of these books into Great Be Graded just to see what happens with them. Uh, but I do want to thank Bob's Roger and DS, uh, three of the most knowledgeable guys on the net at this point in time. Also want to say congratulations to Roger, who has hit a thousand subs. He is doing live shows. We get to see his mug on the 24th of February. So uh, have your supper, let your stomach settle, maybe drink some cream before it happens, because we're about to see... Uh, uh, Roger's face, Metarog's face on the 24th. He's got a great contest going on now. And the night of the uh, 24th, there'll be the com there'll be the No Faces chat. And I do believe then we go into a DS live chat. And there's going to be prizes and hilarity and jocularity and people coming on and a whole bit. So if you've got nothing better to do uh, and you want to see what Roger looks like, this might be your only time to do it. But uh, I want to thank those three guys for uh, really uh, waking me up this week and going through my comics. And uh, I, I so enjoyed doing that. And uh, I haven't been through some of those boxes in about a year. And it was really nice to go through. And I'm going to do that more often. So thank you guys very much. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you something really quick. What I do with my... Um, my, all my, uh, you guys think, well, he buys so many true believers, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, I do. So guys, we've got a little bit of sun going on here. So this is why I buy these true believers, because what I end up doing is I stick them in the ends of my, uh, my comic uh, drawer boxes, and it just adds uh, a nice look. I can change these anytime I want. And what's nice about these is even if they are in the sunlight a little bit, it doesn't really matter. I paid a dollar for them. But it gives me the ability to see the classics, uh, that I will never own, or probably would never, and I would definitely would never show them like this. But uh, I, I can change these anytime I want, and I often do, and I super enjoy it. Uh, when somebody comes in and sees this, they're like, holy cow, those are really cool. Um, but that's what I do with my true believers. But anyways, I want to say thank you guys for tuning in. I sure appreciate it. Uh, keep your peepers open for the uh, No Faces chat. You'll love it. And uh, Area 51, home of the superheroes and some comic book stuff. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.